Amen. It gives me joy when I see in church on Tuesday. I don't just see church goers, I see people who want to grow in the spirit. Amen. Mark chapter number four from verse 35. And the same day, when the evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. Verse 36 says, And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the sheep, and there were also with him other little sheep. All right. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the wave beat into the sheep so that it was now full. All right? And he was in the hinder part of the sheep, asleep on the pillow. And they awoke him and said unto him, Master, carest not thou that we perish? Wow. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace. Be still, and the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said, I don't know what you are. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that ye have no fear? And verse 41, and they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this? Even the wind and the sea obeyed him. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thank you for this moment. Speak your word into our heart. Heal the sick, raise the dead, set the captives free. Do great and mighty works here and glorify your son Jesus. Thank you my Father. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. And let the sense of God shout aloud, Amen. amen. Please help me go around and welcome everybody to church and tell them you're welcome to church. God bless you. Good to see your face. You're welcome to church. Yes, you're welcome to church. It's good to see your face. You're welcome to church. Glory to God. You're welcome to church. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, you may have your seat in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I said amen. amen. All right, you may have your seat. Thank God for another week. Amen. amen. Something amazing is coming your way. Amen. Uh, in Jesus' wonderful name. There is something remarkable about the Christian life. <laughs> about what? We are just Christ-like, you know. Only the Christian can accept what happened in Nigeria these few weeks. Only Christians. Only Christians. I'm telling you. I, I challenge you with that. Only Christians. If not Christians, this country will have been burning by now. You know, but we, love, we have learned to follow the right paths and allow God to prove himself. Amen. That you win now doesn't mean that you have won already. Amen? There's a difference between, you know, that you win for a moment and then you win for a long time. Amen? So I want to thank God for the Christian life. And that's the essence of being in Bible studies. Amen? So that we teach you to be obedient and we teach you to follow the right paths. Amen? The Bible says follow peace with all men. That doesn't mean that you will see them cheating you cannot fight for your right. You fight for your right in a rightful way. You fight for your right how? In a rightful way. That's, that's how we do our thing. Amen. Now, this evening, it gives me joy to share with you this wonderful word of God. Amen. All right. 2023 is our year of what? 2023. Isaiah 53 and verse 4. And on the left, and shall inherit the Gentiles and make desolate city to be happy dead. And then March, I am. All right, and that's what I'm talking about, you know, the concept of taking over. Understanding the concept of what? Taking over. So shall we begin? 
Now, the concept of taking over is having the dominion mentality or mindset. The concept of taking over is to have the dominion mentality or the dominion mindset. Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says, And God said, Let us make man in our own image and after our own likeness. That's verse 26. And let them have what? Dominion. What is dominion? Dominion simply means the ability to be in control. The ability to be in control over situations, over circumstances, over events. The ability to be in control. And God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fishes of the sea, over the fowls of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth. Wow. So the concept of taking over is simply saying having the dominion what? Mentality. Having what? Having what? And what is dominion? To be in control over what? Situations, circumstances, to be in control over things, to be in control over situation. Now, where we read, the Bible says, and Jesus and his disciples said, let us go over to the other side. And the Bible says, they sent to the multitude away, and they took him as he was in the ship, and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep. He was sleeping. And then suddenly, the wind and everything looked as if they were going to capsize. And the disciple discovered that he was sleeping. In the midst of tempest, in the midst of turbulence, this man was comfortable sleeping. Meaning there is something he knows that others don't know. There is no way you can sleep comfortably inside water. There must be splashes of water. They thought the splashes of water will wake him up. But the splash of water did not wake him up, not because he is not awake. What it means is that he was not disturbed the way they were disturbed. And they look at him and say, it's like you don't care if we perish. <laughs> and, he and he awake and look at them, and then he said, peace be still. He rebuked the wind, and everything went calm. And they began to wonder, what manner of man is this? Wow. Look at it, Genesis. And God said, let us make mine our own image after our own likeness and let them have what? Let them have what? Let them have what? So dominion is the ability for you to be in control. Meaning, don't let your situation control you, control your situations. I'm talking to somebody here now. Don't allow circumstances to control you, control them. Hello? Don't allow them to control you, control them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Look at your and say, neighbor. Don't allow your situations to control you, control them. That's right. So control the situation. Control it. Don't let it control you. Don't let it get at you. See, the mistake you are doing, the reason why many of you are not taking over, you don't have this dominion thing, is because you have allowed situation to what? Control you. You are not in charge. The situation is controlling you. The event that happened is controlling you. The things that is controlling you. You're not, you're, not, you're not in control. You're not in charge. Some of you, your life, you, you're even saying it with your mouth. I don't understand my life again. I don't know what's wrong with me. Because you've lost control somewhere at a point in your life. Now, receive control to, from today. Be in charge from today. I can't hear. Be in charge from today. Be in charge from today. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to show you what are the signs that you're not in control. I will find time to break that one down. If I try to talk that one, I will go outside what I'm trying to present to you. But in all is the concept of taking over simply having the dominion what? Mentality. Having what? Now, the dominion mentality is not the arrogant approach that the charismatic are teaching you. Ah, the kingdom of God is not violent. Uh -uh. It is not. It is the ability, come on now, to be in control over situation circumstances. We saw it. Jesus was in control of the situation. The situation, the disciples have lost control. They, they were about, oh, you don't care if we perish? I know he stood up, uh, not with, uh, you know, a uh, but just gently, he rebuked the wind and said, peace, be still. And everything went. Wow. This is amazing. <laughs> that is what the Lord wants us to do. That is exactly what God wants us to operate. 
in every situation that comes around, when people try to antagonize us, when people try to instigate you, when situations try to get at you, the Lord expects you to rise to the tax and rebuke the situation and say, peace be what? Be still. Peace be still. So the ability to be in control, that is it. So, hear this. God created man to have dominion. You see it there. But somehow along the line, please watch this now, I want to go a little deeper. Man lost that dominion to Satan. Man lost dominion to what? To Satan. So man is no longer in charge, something is now in charge. Woe to this earth because Satan is entered and been cast down upon thee. So man lose the power to control. Things began to control him. Satan pollute his mind. Detect for him, please do that, do this, do that. So man is no longer in control. Man have lost his dominion. In order for a man to get or reclaim his mandate of dominion, everybody hear me now, that man needed to be able to what? Realize certain things. So that is what the man must follow the process of taking over. To reclaim his mandate of dominion, that is what is known as taking over. So your ability to take over is your ability to reclaim the mandate of dominion. So it's such a wonderful declaration for this month. I'm taking over. Meaning you are reclaiming your mandate of what? Dominion. I'm talking to somebody here now. I'm taking over simply means I'm reclaiming what? My mandate of what? Dominion. I'm taking over simply means I'm reclaiming my mandate of what? Talk to me somebody. Taking over simply means I'm reclaiming my what? My mandate of what? Dominion. Now how do I reclaim this now? That is why we are here. Look at Jesus. How did Jesus operate? There are two fundamental principles that we are to walk when Jesus claimed that dominion, express that dominion, demonstrate that dominion. You also can have it. Let us look at it. No man reclaim his dominion outside these two principles, outside these two prophetic outline. Number one, every man must know his source. Every man must know what? His source. Okay, so let's begin. Are you with me? Number one is for you to know what? Your source. Okay, look at everybody. What is the source of fish? What is the source of The water. Take away fish from the water. What can he do? Huh? He naturally dies. Three of us. Wow. Wow. What is the source of a plant? Sorry. Take away the plant from the soil. What happened to the plant? So nothing survives outside his source. What's the source of man? God. Take away man from God. What happened to that man? So until you know your source, you cannot reclaim your mandate of dominion. And not to reclaim your mandate of dominion simply means you are, cannot be able to take over. So it begins with knowing who? Your source. Every man that has demonstrated this unique dominion does that on the platform that he knows his source. The source of a man replenish his resources. Every resources of a man come from his source. It come from your source. It come from your source. You can't reclaim your dominion from Satan outside God. You cannot. Nobody can. Nobody can. Nobody can. In the Old Testament, there are some people who try to reclaim that dominion. But because there was no proper, you know, fullness of time, they try but they fall off. They try, but they follow. Moses came with authority and power. As a matter of fact, Moses operated on the high level of revelation. Moses wrote the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created heaven and the earth. Was Moses in the beginning? Was Moses there? 
How did Moses have access to this revelation? Go, go study and discover. This man has seen the face of God. If there's a prophet among you, I've spoken to him in dream. If there's a prophet among you, I've spoken to him in vision. But Moses, my servant, I've spoken to him how? Face to face. So God sat him down. God sat Moses down and began to show him how he created the wall. Hello? He showed him everything about Genesis. The story of Abraham, God showed to Moses. The story of Noah, God showed to Moses. Hello? With this dimension of authority, at a little instance, Moses disappointed God. Hello? And grace was not available. Grace was not available. But look at the, the level of exploit. Daniel chapter number 11 verse 32 says, And such have done wickedly shall be given to flattery, but the people that know what their God shall be what? Strong and do what? Exploit. So you cannot, everybody hear me now, come to the place of this taking over without knowing your source. And for you to know this is your source, God is now your source. And your ability to know God makes you strong and makes you to do exploit. The word exploit there is make you to take dominion. So your knowledge of God, your understanding of God empowers you for dominion. Care us not that we perish? Peace be still. He rebuked it and it was great calm. It was not a guest work. Let me try whether it will work or not. It was instantly because he knows. At a certain place, he said, he that sent me is with me. Father, thank you because you always hear. He knows his horse. Father, thank you because you always hear me. When you don't know your source, your resources run dry. You don't know your source, your anointing run dry. Am I making sense to somebody here? The source of a man is God. If man is separated from God, he dies naturally. He dies. He dies naturally. He cannot pray. He becomes a slave to Satan. And that's what Satan wants. To make a slave from him. In the book of Mark, we saw a man who was possessed by legions. 2,000 demons were inside of him. That's what happened. When you are separated from God, Satan invades your life. Remember Jesus giving an illustration? When you cast out the devil in a man, the place is empty. The devil leaves and he goes around and return back to the same place and see what that, something has occupied it. If it is empty, he goes out to look for seven other demons, including him eight, and they enter into the man's and make his life miserable. No man survives after being separated from God. He becomes a place where devils, Satan, take advantage of. Hello? So number one, in this concept of taking over, you must know who your source is. Hello? I'm talking to someone here now. Are you here for me? Are you here for this service? You must know your source. Who is your source? Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. The people that know their God shall be what? Shall be weak. Shall be crying. Shall be fainting. What would they do? But the people that do know their God shall be what? And do what? Simple. Who is your source? And the people that know their what? Shall be what? What? Simple. Let me show you something exciting in the book of Psalm. Psalm 18, verse 29. Verse Psalm 18, 29 to verse 38. Psalm 18. Now, talking about God. Look at, the, look at, the, look at it, please. Look at it here. Talking about God. For by God... I have run through a troop and by my God, I have leaped over a wall. So no matter how wall they have built around you and your destiny, God will enable you to leap over it. Then you get this here. <laughs> you don't know your source now. The people that know their God shall be so. You don't know your source. Knowing your source, this is what happened. For by thee, I have run through a troop. So they got that troop. By God, you push through. You come before a wall. 
by God, he leap you over a wall. No stopping you. I'm not hearing that in my word. Now look at verse 30. He said, as for God, his ways is what? Perfect. The word of the Lord is tried and it's a buckler to all those that what? Trust in him. Verse 31. For who is God, save the Lord? Who is a rock, save our God? Verse 32, you will like this one now. It is God that guided me with what? I can't hear you. It is God that what? I'm making my way what? Katashia Tabada. Look at verse uh, 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 33. He made my feet like what? The hind feet. Now, let me explain that. Don't move that scripture out of that place. Let me explain that now. He made my feet like a hind feet. Now, the hind feet, how many of you have ever seen a kangaroo? How many of you have seen a kangaroo? Does a kangaroo run? Huh? What does he do? Limp. Spring. To have a hind feet simply means you are not running, you are springing. Pam, pam, pam. Before you take 10 steps, my two steps, you know, covers about 20 of your steps. That's what it means. Now, receive grace for speed. You don't understand that. Receive grace for speed. He make my feet like the hind feet. This has been my prayer for many years. Some of you have heard me say that there are things I pray for God for for many years. This one my prayer for for many years. Lord, give me the feet, the hind feet. Is a feet of speed. Speed. <laughs> In the pursuit of life, speed. And he set me upon my what? High places. That's God. That's God. Verse 34. He teached my hands to what? To war. So that a bow of steel is broken by my arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and the right hand holding me up, and thy gentleness have made me great. And thy gentleness have made me what? Great. <laughs> Talking about this God. Look at verse 36. Thou hast enlarged my step under me that my feet did not want sleep. You won't fall. Yeah. You won't fall. Verse 37. I have pursued my enemies and do what? Overtaking them. Neither did I turn again till they were what? Consumed. Who is behind you? I have wounded them that they were not able to what? To rise. They are falling under my feet. Goodness me. The people that know their God. When you know your source, now so it be your life. People begin to wonder, what is happening? What is the secret of this person? He knows his source. Who is your source? Talk to me. Who is your source? I'm not hearing. Who is your source? And that's it. Nobody survive. No entity survive outside his source. The source of fish is the water. Take the fish out of the water, he dies. The source of plant is the soil. Plug it out of the soil. No plant survives outside the soil. The source of man is God. When a man is separated from God, watch him. He dies gradually. He dies gradually. But when God is your source, look at the scripture I've just read. Your life becomes a miracle. Life becomes a miracle. It's a new day in your life. I didn't hear you. Amen. What are the two fundamental principles that brings you to dominion. Number one, knowing your source. Knowing what? Your source. Knowing what? Your source. Then number two now, understanding yourself. Knowing your source is one thing and then understanding yourself is another thing. The secret of unleashing your potential in life is knowing yourself. Understanding yourself. Understanding the power you carry. Understanding the strength within you. Within you. Knowing yourself. Everyone who has come on the face of the earth and have exercised certain level of dominion, they are not doing it ignorantly. They knew it with the cautiousness of who they know who they are. They know who they are. You can't intimidate them because they know who they are. You can't scare them because they know who they are. 
To live on the face of the earth, not knowing who you are, is an abuse of identity. You don't know who you are. So life treats you anyhow because you don't know who you are. You accept anything because you don't know who you are. But the day you began to understand who you are, not everything you accepted. Every performance in is a direct function of knowing and understanding yourself. Everyone performances. Everyone. Everyone expression of uh, dominion is knowing who he is. David did not blindly go and fight Goliath. He does it. Who is this uncircumcised Philistines that have defied the army? So he knew he is enlisted in the military of heaven. He didn't just go there with empty mouth. How dare you touch the anointed of God? Your head is coming down. He knows. The question to answer for you tonight, who are you? Why you behave the way you behave because you don't know who you are. You claim a child of God, but the result you are showing different. <laughs> you claim that you are a child of a king, but all your behavior is showing slavery. You are under duress. You are under pressure. <laughs> Until you take time to know who you are, you will understand this. Let's look at what happened to Jesus. Matthew 16. Matthew 16. Matthew 16 from verse 13. Matthew 16 from verse 13. Let's, let's look at it together before we pray. Have you ever wondered why Jesus said this? Look at the screen. Matthew 16 verse 13. And when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, Whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? <laughs> and they said, some say thou art John the Baptist, some say thou art Elias, some others say you are Jeremiah, or, you know, one of the prophets. Okay. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon answered and said, thou art Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood had not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And verse 18 he said, And I said unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. Verse 19, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be lost where in heaven. Wow. Wow. Who do men say that I am? Who do men say that I am? So, Jesus tried to draw the attention of disciples to this fundamental. The things you do in life is a direct function of who you are. The things you do is a direct function of who you are. If you can't define who you are, if you don't understand who you are, if you don't know yourself, then I, I'm telling you that you are here to begin life. <laughs> you are here to begin life. Mm, you are here to begin life. There are things around you that will never change until you know who you are. Understanding thyself. How do I come to the level of in, in dominion? Understand yourself. Understand yourself. Understand yourself. You don't understand yourself, you cannot pray to them. If you don't understand yourself, you cannot take over. Look at this story. First Samuel 30. And when he came with the disciples everywhere, the Bible says, they were all scattered. Everything was born in Ziglag. All his effort wasted. And the people, the army with him started crying. They wept until they were on the ground. Oh, what is happening? What is going on? And it was, it is David that had caused it. They picked stone. They wanted to stone him. He never looked to them. The Bible says, and he encouraged what? My goodness. This man knows something that others don't know. <laughs> what are they doing? 
They were finding fault. Why do they? They were looking for stone to stone him. What did he do? He encouraged himself. This man knows something they don't know. While they were busy making out and everything, he sent for Abiata the priest. Shall I pursue? Will I overtake? Will I recover all? And he said, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake. And without fail, recover all. He stood up. In the midst of ashes, he was pursuing. Few hours later, he has recovered everything. While some will never recover for life. Some will never recover for life. And somebody is recovering after a few hours. What is actually the secret? Know thyself. Know yourself. You see, when you are groping in ignorance, you are just groping. And then by the time you catch something, you look at it. Ah, I don't get something. That's how some of you are moving life. Moving life like try and error. You don't move life with try and error. You move life consciously and deliberately. I'm heading this direction. And in this direction, this one is there. I'm heading there. And then actually you go there and whatever you see there, you stand your ground. The function of choice and not a matter of force. I'm talking to somebody here. See, this is what makes our Christian life very sweet. Understanding thyself. The essence of Bible study. Hello, everybody. I'm talking to you now. The essence of Bible study every day. We come for Bible study, first service, Thursday, everything, preaching, everything, is to give you an insight of understanding of who you are according to God's word and also in life. Not just only in the word of God, but also in life. Hello? Are you hearing what I'm saying? In the word of God, you are a child of God. What about other life? You're also a child of God. To demonstrate what kind of life? You must understand this. Some of you have left certain kind of life, like the place I've read, knowing your source. Some of you are looking at it, maybe this one is for pastor responsibility. And that is what you are missing. That's what you are missing. No, this kind of life. Ah, loop over a leap over a wall. Ah, it teaches my hands to wall so that the bowl of steel is broken by my hand. No, he's, talk, he, he's talking to pastors. You miss it. To break the bowl of steel simply means you set record in business, in career, setting record. There is a high calling God has given to you. High calling is not about being a bishop or archbishop. It's a lifestyle. Understand thyself. The things you command in life are a function of how you understand yourself. The question is, as I round up, how do I understand myself? Simple. Study. What I say you should do? Study. <laughs> Second Timothy and chapter 2 verse 15. What did he say? Study to show thyself. A proof unto God. Study to do what? Show thyself. Study to do what? That's just all. Under what? Study to know yourself. Study to know yourself. Now, what does the word study mean? Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that never to be ashamed, uh, rightly dividing the word of truth. All right. So what does it mean to study? To study simply means <laughs> to devote time and attention to gain knowledge on a particular subject. Devoting your time, devoting your attention to gain access to knowledge on a particular subject, on a particular matter, or on yourself. Have you cared to study about yourself in the Word of God? Have, since you become born again. The only time you even know about yourself is when man of God preach. So, know yourself. It enhances your place of authority. The reason why Jesus was sleeping in the midst of a, you know, a, what do you call it, a tempest and a sheep is because he knows himself. Because he what? Knows himself. There was a time Paul and the, uh, uh, was arrested and he was being taken to Rome because he demanded to be taken to Rome. And before then, the Lord told uh, 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 Paul and said to him, I will take you to Rome where you preach. And Paul said, I don't have transport. And God said, okay, let's arrange for transportation for you. And how do we arrange for transportation for you? You're going to be arrested. And when they arrest you, tell them that you plead your case against Caesar. So simple. <laughs> Holy Spirit. So they arrested him. They took him. 
When they took him before Herod, he looked at Herod and he tell Herod, I, I am a Roman, I'm a Roman uh, 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 citizen. And, and Herod said, what? You Hebrew, you arrested a Roman Hebrew? Uh, he said, don't you know it's a crime for a Jew to arrest a Roman? And he said, leave the I applied to Caesar. I want my case to be taken to Caesar. And he said, is that what you want? He said, yes, take him to Caesar. <laughs> That's how this my entire room you know when you, the, who will pay for the ticket? Will you be the one who will pay for the ticket? Free transportation. Free transportation. On their way, there was heavy storm. For three days, no sun. It was all terrorizing. You've not known this kind of storm. How many of you have woke up, maybe it rain one to four in the morning, the, the sky become dark. Have you seen that kind of Everywhere become dark. No sun. For three days, only lightning turned up. You know that kind of sight? It's terrible. So people can fade. And, they, and it is not a, a modern ship. It's an olden days ship with wood. It will hit here, fall here, and it, it said all of hope was lost. They started throwing things out. Paul now came up and said, hey, ladies and gentlemen, I have an agreement with God. I must reach Rome. Don't worry. The Lord has appeared to me. Whom I serve, whom, uh, whom, whom I am, and whom I serve. Uh, everybody will be saved. The ship will crash, but an island. We will soon get to an island. They were looking at him like uh, he told them, and exactly what he said. That's what happened. Coming to a place of dominion, he said, "Do you know what he said? He said, the Lord whose I am and whom I serve. These things go together, meaning I know myself and I know the God I serve. These two things together gives you a key for a life of exploit. I know myself." And I know the God I serve. Let's do it. The reason is because you've not known yourself. You are doing business, you don't even know yourself. You are doing business, you don't even know the God behind you. So you are doing business just to eat. And God is telling you, no, this business should take you international. But because you have not taken time to know yourself. So study. The key to knowing yourself is study. What is study? The means. I mean, study means to devote time and attention to gain knowledge. How do you do that? By listening to lecturers, like preachers, teachers, like this, number one. How do we study? Number one, by what teachers, the way you are listening here. What are you gaining? You are gaining access to what knowledge. The problem I have with you is that you don't embrace this knowledge. You come to Bible study, you hear the word of God, it's sweet people, belly, as soon as you are living there. And I they see many of them. When I close, I they go house. I they see many of now. All the things you learn, I see some of them like drop on there. Me, I can't. Come keep a game for the next Tuesday. Make a give. Like now, after I finish teaching now, some of you, as soon as you go there now, you don't come. How do I know? The first thing you do, some of you that we are high here. You first of all, your shoe. You don't short. Some of you, you remove your scarf. You don't come out the table when I don't teach you. <laughs> some of you, before you leave, now phone call. Where are you? They come now. You, everything you've learned. <laughs> so how do I know? Because when you reach house, before you sleep, there's what they call review. You don't review it. And this thing is on Facebook. You can download it. You can go there. Okay, for example, today, download this page. Go home. Do this as practical example. Go home and listen to it again before you sleep. And say, Holy Spirit, talk to me on this. I'm telling you what will make you operate on the face of the earth. As the gods that you have. For I said unto you that ye are gods. And every one of you are the children of the Most High. What does gods do? They take dominion. And that's what I'm teaching you. So how do you uh, come understand yourself? By study. How do you study? By listening. Not listening and throwing away. Listening and absorbing. Number one. Number two, by reading books. By reading what? Books. By reading books. Some of you, by your bedside, there are no books. And you claim you went to school. Bedside. Any of you that don't have a book by your bedside, there's a problem. And you know how to read and write, there's a problem. No matter how, there should be a book by your bedside. Even if it is far from you, be looking at it. Even if it's just a topic, power of choice. Just look at it. There is something about this book. I'm telling the truth. Develop the habit of reading books. Studying. 
studying. I can't be at this level embodiment of wisdom and knowledge if not because of the books that I've swallowed, I've eaten in my life, and I'm still eating. I invite you to dinner. Let's eat the book. So, by reading books. Number three, by research. You study by research. What does research mean? Asking questions. Number four. By looking into history. How many of you have grown up listening to Tales by Moonlight? How many of you have listened to Tales by Moonlight? This generation, cartoon won't let them listen to it. Amen. In our own time, we don't miss Tales by Moonlight every Sunday by 4 o'clock. Am I right? It's 4 o'clock now, every Sunday by 4 o'clock. You know, I've forgotten this woman that will gather children and be telling them Tales by Moonlight story. I don't miss it. We don't have television, no, but... If I tell you how many kilometers I used to go to watch Tales by Moonlight, it will surprise you. Before finally, we were able to have television in our house, and I begin to, add, you may deny me anything, you know. Until one day, I don't know what happened to the pastor, he started putting evening service on a Sunday, saying we must come back for evening service. Hi! But you know, trust me, I pray God, Lord, don't let this evening service st uh, stand. The first Sunday, hi, oh. Second Sunday, the third one, the pastor announced, no evening service. I raised my hand like Tinubu, I don't win. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Amen. So you, you study by listening to history, you know. Number three, how do you study? Check the friends you have. Your friend speaks volume, true or false? True or false? Uh -uh. Answer me. True or false? Your friend speaks what? Your friends are a replica of who you are. They say, show me your friend and I will what? Tell you who you are. That's the truth. So the kind of friends you have, if you want to know yourself, look at the friends you have. Simple. When you have mad people, you know you are mad already. You are part of them. <laughs> when you have crazy people around you, you should know you are one of them. If they are four crazy people, then you are the fifth one. I'm telling you. If you have nine millionaires around you. Who is the tenth one? You are the tenth one. Just know that and have peace in your mind. The kind of friends you have tells who you are. May the Lord bless his word. Amen. 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 Bow your head as we pray. Lord, I want to know you more and I want to know myself more. Say, the Lord, whose I am, whose I am and whom I serve, has appeared to me. Lord, I want to know you more, and I want to know myself more. Lift your voice and pray that prayer. Open my eyes to know you more. I want to know you more, Lord. I want to know you more, Lord. Balato Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name. Put those hands together for the Lord.